Well, Yulia Mendel is a journalist and the former spokesperson of the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky. I asked her how she was coping with everyday life. Well, uh, Kiev is almost empty right now. There are a lot of checkpoints and, uh, of course, uh, it's a fortress today. It's uh, being defended very much. You hear there or closer or further the explosions all the time and we were driving near uh, near Kiev and we saw the explosion of some huge depot with huge smoke. Two nights ago, I spent myself in a bomb shelter. The grates shelled 150 meters from me. That was all on fire and we actually believed that we wouldn't stay alive but i'm here and i'm grateful to god for this the invasion has now entered its uh, second month how much longer can people in kiev and the wider population of ukraine endure this well, of course, uh, there are uh, places in Ukraine uh, where uh, people are desperate about food, about water, about actually any life conditions like Kharkiv or Mariupol that you mentioned, or occupied Kherson region. In Kiev, it's little better. I mentioned this is a fortress and people left there. But what we are afraid that Russia uh, did not reach its, uh, 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 while Russia did not reach its goals of uh, uh, occupying Kiev, is going to go to the next level and use uh, chemical weapons because this is what our uh, intelligence is selling that in the next 12 days Russia can use chemical weapons it will be difficult but still they will try that's what we believe will happen in the next 12 days how are people managing for uh, for everyday uh, supplies tell me about the supply shortages I and mean, how are people yeah. coping with what you need in terms of food and, and water and the rest yeah. of it Thank you. So it's said uh, the worst situation is Mariupol, Kharkiv and occupied Kherson. For you to understand, uh, when my friends and relatives in Kherson wake up at 6 a.m., they need to stay in the lines for, hundreds, for dozens of kilometers just to get like a butter or an old potatoes. And of course, they do not know what's going to happen next. It's a lack of uh, medical uh, support and medicine. So people die of heart strokes and uh, uh, heart attacks and uh, different other um, diseases because they do not get uh, the help uh, in time and uh, the country has turned into the country of refugees and internally displaced people of course people left their homes there were a lot of traumatized people injured people of course we care about post-traumatic syndrome of about uh, our future of our kids who became adult and mature just in a night and they care about existential questions right uh, now we are very grateful for all the support and humanitarian aid that is being provided for our international partners and we hope that we will stay there is no any any day that we can say that this is the last day but there are cities which are desperate for food and medicine and any kind of supply to help people survive and to help or to have good conditions you worked with president Zelensky directly uh, you you know the man um, you must be Spirit. inspired watching him and how he's led Ukraine through this well, President Zelensky showed that he did everything to unite Ukrainians in this uh, defense, and also uh, it di he did everything to unite the civilized world around Ukraine. We are really proud to have him as a president these days, leading the country, uh, but also we care about him as he is a legitimate and democratically elected president. He has 93 percent of support these days, and this support just rises every day. I know it's very hard for him, but I do not have any surprise because I know he is the person who had courage always to stay in solidarity with his people. So we're looking forward and we actually are looking forward to win this war because we have the value to fight. We have what to fight for our home, for our land, for our independence and for the democracy.